G'day and welcome back to the workshop. Today I'm going to be working with these timbers to make a TV cabinet for my client John. This top piece here, uh, which will be the main feature piece, is a big slab of jarra, which is only found in southwest WA here in Australia. So very cool to have this piece of timber come through my shop. And this is some campaspe red which was sourced uh, off John's property so milled up and then brought in very cool very cool to have some local timber um, both of these timbers feature throughout his house and all of this timber was left over after the build we went through a few different drawings just bouncing different ideas for what John was seeking from this TV cabinet he recently moved his TV to a wall mounted setup and wants a cabinet underneath to hold the electronics and he was deciding on a sub box or not and that's the final design does include the subwoofer box so I began this cabinet by laminating the campaspe red together to make some wider boards that sort of meet close to the dimensions of the jarra but they sit sort of lipped under so the jarra is going to sit more pronounced and be more of the feature. You can see on the table there on that top piece there is a big crack through there so that will also be one of the major features of this piece so I try my best to not damage any of it. So I use this little jig, this block that I drilled with the drill press that I know is set at 90 degrees and then I set it on top of where I have my holes marked and this bit is an auger so it sort of pulls itself through the timber and as long as you keep it at 90 degrees it'll pull through a really nice clean straight hole. Uh, you can see the boards didn't quite line up that was okay because after they were glued up I sent them to be uh, resurfaced um, and the faces paralleled again with each other. This is after the wood has been resurfaced. You can see those joins came out really flush and clean. Um, I started laying out the cabinet to mark up some holes. You can see there's a bit of a chippage from the resurfacing. Um, this is where the main feature crack will appear. It's uh, one of the leg pieces. It's quite big, quite gory, it's like a gorge um, and it's a contrast of colour so I think it'll stand out quite nicely in the final rendition. So with everything sat out I started marking up and cutting where I needed these legs to slot into and I chose to use the, the saw and I set the depth at I think it was 20mm and just cut out the section little by little and then chiseled out the corners. I know there's not a lot of footage there of me actually cutting into that but you can see all the cut marks and you get the idea of what I of my approach there to clean out these uh, slots. Datums? Dados? The mm, dunno. Is it anyway. Mortis and tenon. So I cut out the tenon here, I think. Or the mortars. I don't know. But you can see it slots in pretty tight, which is what I was after. I need to sand it back later, all these boards, so having it tighter now before it's sanded is good. Um, had to sharpen my chisel a few times, it was getting pretty messed up. This wood is very dense, they're not very sharp to begin with, but I do try and keep them somewhat good. This side didn't come out as good, I actually I removed a bit too much material and I end up getting a pretty loose fit. I know once the rest of the structure goes together it's all good, so I wasn't too stressed, I was just a bit like, damn, damn, need to make that better, need to make that better. The bolts, the bolts. So I'm cutting out these slots for the shelves to lock into. Uh, these are the legs, so once they were fitted to the top piece I could take my measurements and mark up the shelves 
how far they come down from the top piece, if that makes sense. Uh, I'm just making sure my rail, my guide rail here for my router is all set up correctly and realizing I need to stop the cut before I get to that crack because I don't want to have that shelf that's going to join in uh, come through there. I'd like it to sit behind the crack. Fast forwarded here, you can see I've already done the other valley. This one does pass through the crack, but it's in a spot where there's lots of dried resin and stuff, so it doesn't matter too much. Here all the valleys are cut, and now I'm just fitting up. The process of this was fitting up, taking measurements, fitting up, taking measurements, because I couldn't trust that everything was right on my drawings, and I just had to keep checking. Check square, take measurements, cut out the grooves, and then fit stuff. So I've cut my shelves here to length, and now they're fitting in pretty tight. I've got the bottom one already fitted, already fitting, fitted, I don't know. So I need to get these two, the top and bottom shelf need to go in so I can mark out where my support is going to sit. So I measured out my fence for my rail. And I wasn't meant to make these cuts go all the way through. They were meant to stop about 20mm uh, from the edge on one side um, because the side that was going to be the front needs to have like these clean joins of where these timbers are coming in and I don't want it to show the, the mortars, I just want the boards to sort of butt up like a T and yeah there was a few cuts I was doing you'll see it at the end and they're all they're all on the support uh, piece they're all cut through and when you get a final look at the front you can see all my mortise and tenons going into each other which is what I wanted to avoid I wanted it to be a nice clean look um, it still came out nice I'm still happy with the results but there's the the stop I'm talking about so stopping yeah like 15 mil from the front you can see I started a cut from the other side, that little half moon that's coming out. Um, I thought I'd just ignore that and I might fill it in later is where I was thought, but I actually never end up filling that. I just left it. Alright, so another assembly to check this support piece and I'm pretty sure my camera dies here as well. And it'll fast forward any minute now. So I'm just slotting, slotting the leg up and getting top and bottom shelf locked in using the clamps to help me lock it all together and now I can chuck in my support piece so cut to length and so with that in I mark up how far down the middle shelf needs to go and since you saw since you didn't see me put this shelf in you can watch me struggle to take it out So this one I cut all the way through by accident. Oh, I stopped on this one on the second pass. So I cut through on one pass. You can see there's a tiny slot that's come all the way through the board. But on the second pass I didn't and I fill that in with a block later. You can see the fitment is nice. Using my sample piece just to check. And here it is, fully assembled. Sorry, I am terrible at recording. Like I said, I've got issues with the uh, batteries. I just never check when they're going flat. So this is the first assembly, pre-sanding. Uh, John came and checked it out and said he'd like a, an oil finish and he'd like some of the edges rounded out and this back panel to be put on the bottom shelves, but leaving the subwoofer box and the top shelf open. So I got to work on that. We've disassembled first and labeling as I disassemble so I don't mix parts up.
which brought me to my final stage, one of my final stages, which is sanding. So I got my workbenches set up and the sander out, starting at, I think I started at 80 grit, and most of the body was done to 120 grit, and the top was done to 180, and then finished with a 240. I think, but I do the 240 off camera later before I do the varnish after it's all assembled. I skip through the sanding, sanding's pretty boring. So, onto the glue up which means reassembling for the ninth time maybe, just to get everything roughly into position. So I purchased uh, these clamps, this pipe clamp set up on the same day because um, I realised after my first glue up, doing all the laminates, um, that I didn't have enough clamps. And these pipe clamps, you can, um, if you get threaded pipe like this, you can change the, uh, the headstock that's on it, like the, the screw part on it, onto a, a, a different length of pipe as long as it's got the same thread. So they're really handy, I'm glad I bought them. I got uh, three sort of three setups, I guess, and about and four different pipes. So I've got a really long pipe and then I've got um, three short ones. No, I got three pipes, I've got two short ones, 1.7s or 1.5s, and then I've got that two meter thirty or something like that. These were the blocks I was talking about earlier where I overcut doing my routing so I just put those blocks in and a bit of you know glue and sawdust just to make these joins look really really tight. I don't show the finishing on any of these but that's what I was mentioning before where I went back over everything with a 240 grit and just cleaned it all up. And now for the best part this is where it really transforms everything that you've done into something else, uh, the varnish, well the oil, sorry. So this is just Danish oil going on and I'm gonna leave it the rest of the video, no commentary uh, until the end and just enjoy the oil going on to this beautiful timber.
Here I've just got to cut the back panel, so that other piece that I showed earlier wasn't brand new, it was quite dirty. Uh, this was just nailed on to the back, onto all shelves, so there was no sort of um, rattling, vibration or like movement in it, so I nailed it. I put a lot of nails in, you'll see. Kind of overkill. And I oiled it just to darken it on the side that you're going to see, because uh, it was a bit too bright, but the oil I think it's still brighter than the rest of it, but I think once it's got stuff all over the shelves, you won't you won't really notice it. So yeah, a lot of nails as you can see, and yes, I'm watching PewDiePie play Minecraft here, yes. These are my beauty shots, I tried my best, I tried my best, I wheeled it out, it's pretty heavy, it's not super heavy but it's heavy enough, so I wheeled it out on the workbenches, and uh, I got some shots in the sun, got lucky, we were actually having a lot of bad weather at this sort of time of year, and this day it just um, came up really nice, so got it out in the sun. These are my joins that I was talking about, see how that comes through, but then we go over to this side, see how it doesn't come through, it's nice and clean. That's what I was trying to achieve all round, but on that whole support piece, all three of those joins I messed up. The one that I block you can't really tell, but you can if you look close, but the rest turned out alright. Yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, give us a thumbs up. Be sure to check out some of my other videos if you're interested, and I'll see you in the next one.